why Dwayne Wade is the third best shooting guard of all time. There is no doubt that Dwayne Wade is extremely talented. Seeing him dominate in the finals at both ends of the court is remarkable. D Wade in his prime was one of the most exciting players to watch. He was a two-way player who could slither through double teams so gracefully and defend as well as anyone in the NBA for a player his size. For those that don't know, I love the Miami Heat. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Wade is the reason I truly got into the NBA, so as you can imagine, just like many Miami Heat fans, I was pretty upset when he went to Chicago. In saying that, I don't know how I haven't made a Dwayne Wade video on this channel, but I think it's about time. Now, I think we know who the top two shooting guards of all time are. Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. I don't think that people should have a problem with me calling those two the greatest shooting guards of all time, but the third greatest? Well, that's up for debate. But you've read the title, you clicked on the video, and here's why I think Dwayne Wade is the third best shooting guard of all time. So, in order to put Dwayne Wade in a top three shooting guard list, we first need to discuss who else is fighting for the spot. Here's the list that I've come up with. Obviously, one and two is Mike and Kobe, but for the number three spot, we have Allen Iverson, Clyde Drexler, George Gervin, and obviously Dwayne Wade. Now, you've noticed, I haven't put Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, Sam Jones, or Jerry West, and here's why. I just don't think that the first three players of Miller, Allen, and Jones deserve to be in a top three discussion. Yes, no doubt, they were great players, definitely three of the top shooting guards to play, but I just don't think they were good enough to make it to a top three shooting guard of all time. I also mentioned Jerry West. The reason I'm not talking about Jerry West is, well, because he's a point guard, not a shooting guard. Yes, he may have played shooting guard for some time in the NBA when Gail Goodridge wasn't playing in LA, but for majority of his career, Jerry West was a point guard. According to basketball reference, he was listed at point guard every season but two. And basketball reference is pretty much a guide to basketball, so I'm definitely trusting basketball reference. Anyway, let's compare Dwayne Wade with some of his competition for the top three shooting guard spot. We're gonna compare four things. Peak, career stats, efficiency, and accolades. Now, what I mean by peak is literally at the peak of their career, pretty much their best season. So peak for Dwayne Wade was 30.2 points per game, 5 rebounds, 7.5 assists, 2.2 steals, 1.3 blocks per game with a 30.4 PER. Allen Iverson in 2000-2001 where he won the MVP averaged 31.1 points per game, 3.8 rebounds, 4.6 assists, 2.5 steals, 0.3 blocks with a 24.0 PER. George Gervin in 1979-1980 averaged 33.1 points per game, 5.2 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 1.4 steals, 1 block per game with a 24.0 PER. Reggie Miller in 1989-1990 averaged 24.6 points per game, 3.6 rebounds, 3.8 assists per game, 1.3 steals, 0.2 blocks with a 20.8 PER. Clyde Drexler in 1988-89 averaged 27.2 points per game, 7.9 rebounds, 5.8 assists, 2.7 steals, 0.7 blocks, with a 23.6 PER. The peak of each of these plays is amazing. While George Gervin and Alwyn Iverson were the best scorers, Clyde Drexler is the best rebounder, but that's kind of expected since he was 6'7", and Dwayne Wade is the best passer and the best shot blocker, which is pretty crazy for a guy his size. I give the slight edge to Dwayne Wade here, because of his ridiculous PER, along with the incredible defense he displayed during this season. Now, let's go over career stats. Dwayne Wade, 24.6 points per game, 5 rebounds, 6.1 assists, 1.8 steals, 1 block with a 25.4 PER. Allen Iverson, 23.3 points per game, 3.3 rebounds, 5.4 assists, 1.9 steals, 0.2 blocks with a 20.9 PER. George Gervin, 25 points, 5.3 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 1.2 steals, 1 block with a 21.4 PER. Reggie Miller, 18.2 points per game, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 1.1 steals, 0.2 blocks with an 18.4 PER. Clyde Drexler, 20.4 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, 5.6 assists, 2 steals, 0.7 blocks with a 21.1 PER. Here, Reggie Miller is clearly lacking compared to the other four. 
However, it is important to note that he did play until he was 39 years old. Wade and Drexler clearly have the best outlines for their respective careers. Clyde played until he was 35 years old, so we'll have to see how these numbers change for Dwayne Wade in the next couple of years. Now, the next stat is efficiency, but I don't really want to get too into it because it's sort of hard to explain in numbers, but I'll give you the breakdown. Reggie Miller is the clear winner here because of his excellent three-point and free-throw shooting. Iverson's numbers are pretty bad, in fact, they're abysmal, while Dwayne Wade, George Gervin, and Clyde Drexler are all relatively close to each other. Now, let's look at accolades. Dwayne Wade. He's a three-time NBA champion, a finals MVP, a scoring champion, and a 12-time All-Star, but he's still playing in the NBA today. Allen Iverson. He's an MVP, a four-time scoring champion, and an 11-time All-Star. George Gervin. Four-time scoring champion, nine-time All-Star. Reggie Miller. Five-time All-Star. Clyde Drexler, an NBA champion, and a 10-time All-Star. So, Allen Iverson is the most declarated player in the regular season, but Dwayne Wade has had the most postseason success. He's won more championships than all the other players combined. Yes, he has played with LeBron James and Chris Bosh, but it isn't his fault for wanting to win. Not to mention, he's not the one that left. The other two left their respective teams to join Dwayne Wade in Miami. So, can you really blame Dwayne Wade? Still, in 2006, Dwayne Wade didn't have LeBron James or Chris Bosh, and he still won. Yes, he did have Shaq, but during that final series, it was all Dwayne Wade. I'm going to explain more later on. The 2006 finals performance by Dwayne Wade is argued by many as one of the greatest finals performances of all time, and here's why. In 2006, his teammates included a 33-year-old Shaquille O'Neal, who only played 59 regular season games that year, Udanis Haslam, James Posey, 35-year-old Alonzo Mourning, 37-year-old Gary Payton, and Jason Williams. There was no mistaking Wade's ascension to superstardom. Ironically, his best regular season performance that season was a 44-9-8 near triple-double, and that came in a loss to a third-year player like Wade himself, LeBron James, who eventually they would become teammates and win two championships. But this was only the prelude to what would be one of the greatest postseason performances in NBA history. Wade took Shaq's cape and became Superman. After handling the Chicago Bulls and the New Jersey Nets in the first two rounds, they would have to face up against the tough Detroit Pistons. They were no easy task by any means. In 03-04, they won the NBA championship. In 04-05, they lost in the NBA championship and lost in a close seven games. So when the Miami Heat had to face them the next season, Dwayne Wade was only in his third season. That's like any player drafted in 2014, leading their team to the Eastern Conference Finals. Wade, Shaquille O'Neal, and a 35-year-old Alonzo Mourning against the 64-win Pistons, led by Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, Rashid, and Ben Wallace. They sound friendly, but the Pistons' defense was absolutely insane, and they had a little bit of bad boy about them. Anyway, six games later, Dwayne Wade in his third year was headed to the NBA Finals. In the Eastern Conference Final Series, he put up 27-6-5 on 62% from the field and 81% from the line against one of the league's premier defenses. Wade's NBA Finals were even better. After a poor two games in Dallas as a team, Dwayne Wade scored 42 of his team's 98 points and hauled in 13 rebounds to drag his team to victory in Game 3. Game 4 was more of the same, with Wade scoring 36 of his team's 98, and in Game 5, Wade was already at 41 when Dirk fouled him with 1.9 seconds to go, sending him to the line. Wade sank two clutch free throws to give the Miami Heat a 3-2 series lead, 36 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, 4 steals, and 3 blocks later, Wade was crowned the NBA Finals MVP. And Wade brought the Miami Heat their first title in franchise history. Dwayne Wade during these NBA Finals had an average of 35 points, 8 and 4, with 3 steals, a block, and a game that qualified for one of the greatest NBA playoff performances of all time. John Hollinger wrote in 2012 that it was the single greatest final series in NBA history, ahead of any Jordan 6, ahead of Magic, ahead of Bird, Russell, Kobe, Duncan, which is just crazy to say, but when you break it down, it's definitely up there. In Hollinger's own words, and I quote, 
While it seems strange to have somebody besides Michael Jordan in the top spot for the greatest final series in NBA history, the truth is Jordan never dominated a finals to this extent. At the time, many called Wade's performance Jordan-esque. It turns out they may have been selling Dwayne Wade short. Now, do I agree with this statement? I don't know, that's debatable. Jordan had some pretty amazing moments in the NBA Finals, but I do agree that Dwayne Wade absolutely killed it in 2006. So we've looked at Dwayne Wade compared to some of the other NBA greater shooting guards in Clyde Drexler, Reggie Miller, Allen Iverson, and George Gervin. I've discussed Wade's incredible 2006 Finals performance. Now it's time to go over his 2008-09 season where many consider this season as the season where Dwayne Wade was robbed of the MVP. Dwayne Wade at his peak was unstoppable. In the 2008-09 season, he submitted one of the most dominating seasons in NBA history, slicing through and shooting over opponents, as well as anchoring Miami defensively. Wade manhandled opposing teams, despite possessing a supporting cast of Mario Chambers, Udanis Haslam, Michael Beasley, and Dequan Cook. Hold up a second, <laughs> I need to throw up. I won't even bother mentoring the bench warmers. Surrounded by a horrible roster, Wade joined elite company. Not top 10 or top 5 elite, but all time great. Only 3 players have ever in the entire NBA history scored 2,300 points, hauled in 350 rebounds, and dished out 500 assists in a single season. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Dwayne Wade in 2009. Bill Simmons said it best in the Book of Basketball, saying Wade performed the best Jordan imitation yet. During that particular season, I'd have to agree with Bill Simmons, yet Dwayne Wade didn't win the MVP. And here's why. That year in 2008-09, any fan could make the outstanding argument for either LeBron James or Dwayne Wade to win the MVP award that season. Okay, I'm going to put two sets of numbers on the screen right now, and I want you to choose either player A or player B. Alright, ready? Player A, 30.2 points per game, 1st in the NBA, 7.4 assists, 9th in the NBA, 5 rebounds, 2.1 steals, 2nd in the NBA. Player B, 28.4 points per game, which is 2nd in the NBA, 7.25 assists per game, which is 10th in the NBA, 7.57 rebounds, 1.9 steals, which is 7th in the NBA. Yeah, you probably guessed it already. Player A was Dwayne Wade and Player B was LeBron James. When you put the stats side by side, they are very similar. That particular season, Dwayne Wade beat LeBron James in points, assists, steals, blocks, and field goal percentage. Dwayne Wade easily had a better case to be the MVP that season. If the MVP trophy was awarded to the most valuable player to their team, then Dwayne Wade would have won it. Since the MVP trophy is awarded to the most valuable player in the entire NBA, LeBron James was crowned the winner. Although Dwayne Wade put up incredible numbers that season, LeBron James historically had one of the best seasons in NBA history. LeBron James that year led his team to the best record in the NBA, having the 12th most win shares of all time, the most since Michael Jordan in 1996, enhanced his MVP case by a larger margin. People like to say that Dwayne Wade was robbed of the MVP. I personally don't think he was. I still feel like LeBron should have won that year because he led his team to the best record in the NBA, but I also think you can definitely make a case for why Dwayne Wade could have or should have won the MVP, and also I strongly believe that this season of Wade's should not go unnoticed. Now lastly, I just want to talk about Dwayne Wade's legacy and injuries because I feel like that's important, and then we'll end the video. He's always had some sort of injury throughout his career. That's why I always wonder, what if Dwayne Wade played healthy for most of his career? He's never ever played all 82 games in a season. And he's only played 855 games in his entire career, which is not that much for a player who's played 13 seasons in the league. And obviously Dwayne Wade's impact on the league is still in effect, as he's playing for Chicago this season. But just to go over his legacy, Dwayne Wade already has Hall of Fame worthy accomplishments. He's a three-time NBA champion. He's an NBA Finals MVP. He almost won the MVP, like I said before. He's a 10-time All-Star, All-Star MVP. He's an eight-time All-NBA player, three-time All-Defensive Second Team player. He's a scoring champion. Wade is the only player ever, ever in the entire NBA under six foot six with more blocks than 600. Only he and Michael Cooper have had more than 500. 
despite the fact that Dwayne Wade has never been awarded with an all-defensive first team. He has shown the world of all-defensive talent. You knew he would bring it on a nightly basis from both ends of the floor. Dwayne Wade is also in elite company. Since 1980, only 5 players have averaged 27 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists per game. Larry Bird, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and Dwayne Wade. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it made you think a little bit about Dwayne Wade, and honestly, I want to know if I convince any of you why Dwayne Wade is the top 3 shooting guard of all time. Let me know down below in the comment section, I honestly want to know. And I want you guys to rank your top 5 shooting guards in order, from number 5 to number 1. Let me know down below in the comment section. I think it will be interesting to see what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, it would mean the world to me if you could hit that subscribe button. I make a whole bunch of NBA videos and I'm preparing some pretty cool what ifs and other NBA history videos that I don't think you guys want to miss out on. So it only takes a second, go down below, hit the subscribe button. As for all of you that are currently subscribed, I appreciate all the support that you guys show in every single video. And let's see if we can smash 2,000 likes for the next video. If we can reach 2,000 likes, that would be awesome. And if you want to watch some NBA 2K17 content, I have a separate channel that I post daily NBA 2K17 content on, so the link is down below in the description. And thanks for watching guys, I really really appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.